Hi students, today we start lecture 42 and today I'm going to discuss the range of jet powered aircraft. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, in the previous lecture, we discussed about CT, which is the specific fuel consumption. We'll just recapitulate on that. So CT is defined as Newton of fuel divided by Newton of trust into second. So from this particular definition of the specific fuel consumption for a jet, we can write this equation here. So this CT here for jet engine is different than the C we discussed before for the propeller aircraft. So do keep that in mind. So what I can say is that the Newton of fuel or the change DW is equal to CT into the trust TA into DT. That's the equation we have written here. And the negative sign simply means that the weight of the aircraft reduces as the time elapses. So essentially when you start the process, the start the flight, your engine or your total weight is very high. And then as the fuel keeps getting expanded, the weight keeps decreasing. So that's the negative sign here. And from this equation for DW, we obtain the equation for DT is negative DW by CTTA, which will let us calculate the range of the jet airplane. Now, to calculate the range, we take this value dt and we multiply it by the velocity v infinity of the aircraft. So that gives us ds, which is a small amount of distance which is covered in the time interval dt if you are flying at velocity v infinity. So we plug in this value of dt in this equation and we get this equation for ds. So the v infinity term comes in here. Now to calculate range, I have to integrate from 0 to r ds and that gives me negative w0 to w1 v infinity dw by cttta. So this is the general expression which I have for the range and now I'm going to simplify this by considering various things in steady level flight and also look at the different weight. So before we do that, let us just review the weight nomenclature. So at the beginning of the flight, let us say you are starting from airport A and you are ending up at airport B. The weight at the beginning is W0, which is the gross weight of the airplane. And the weight at the end of flight is W1, which is the weight of the airplane without fuel. And the difference between W0 and W1 is given by WF, which is the weight of the fuel. So here the assumption is you start this aircraft with a full tank and you end the journey with an empty tank. And S is the distance which is traveled. So essentially the small increment is ds. And when we integrate that ds, we get the range value. So this is the range from A to B. It is the amount of distance the aircraft covers. Now certain points to remember here are, of course, that W1 is W0 minus WF. And also that W0 is greater than W1 because you fly with a full tank. And at the end, your tank is finished. So if we want to calculate the expression for the range of jet airplane, we are going to make certain approximations and we are going to consider steady level flight. So steady level flight means that lift equals weight, thrust equals drag. So I can say TA is TR, which is the thrust available is thrust required. This is ensured by the pilot. And this is also equal to drag because of steady level flight. And then I can say drag is equal to DW by W. No problem in having numerator and denominator same here. And this is equal to dW by L. So essentially, I'm using the fact that weight is equal to lift. So I'm putting it in this form. Then I put this as L by D and I keep W here. So this essentially lets me have this equation that TR equals W by L by D. And this is equal to TA. Now we are going to do some further simplifications here. We take this equation for range. We already know TA is W by L by D. And do recall that L and D can be written in terms of the lift coefficient CL and the drag coefficient CD respectively. So here Q infinity is the dynamic pressure, S is the area of the wing, and CL and CD are the lift and drag coefficient. So if we substitute these two, you can immediately see that L by D is the same as CL by CD. So essentially I can write TA equals W by CL by CD. Of course, in all these assumptions and approximations, the fact that 
steady level flight is there is being always considered. So that's coming out from this diagram here. Now we are going to work further on this integral to make it more amenable to closed form integration or to easy integration. So we take this expression for ta and we substitute it in the range integral and we also change the bounds of this integral. So here I had w0 and w1 so I change it so that w1 goes down w0 goes up. Now I can do this provided I change the sign so the sign negative is absorbed here and so the integral is flipped in terms of the bounds. Now what I have here are v infinity ct cl by cd which comes from the ta term and dw by w. Now there's one more problem I need to fix and that is what is v infinity. So v infinity can be obtained from lift which is equal to weight because I'm in steady level flight and so I can write this as half rho infinity v infinity square SCL. Remember rho infinity is density, v infinity is speed of the aircraft. Now from this equation I can write v infinity also in terms of weight and when I do that I can substitute this v infinity in the range equation and then I get this equation here. So you can clearly see that the root 2 by rho infinity s term comes from v infinity. That is a w half here and there is a cancellation. So there is a w half produced in the denominator from the weights and so on. And there is a CL half year or CL root and that cancels with CL here. So a CL half term is produced in the numerator here of this range equation. So this equation is something now we are going to try to use for our further simplifications. So now let's take a good look at this equation. We clearly see that the W terms are in red here. And the remaining terms are here in terms of rho infinity, S, C, L, C, D, and C, T. Now, if I want this integral to be amenable to closed form solution, I can extract all these things out of the integral, provided I assume these are all constant. So let's assume that C, T is a constant, C, L is a constant, C, D is constant, and rho infinity is constant. And after that, I get this nice looking integral here, or rather the solution of this integral here. So remember that w half, if you send it up to the numerator, it becomes w negative half or w minus half. And when you integrate it, it becomes w minus half plus one, which is w half divided by half itself. So that's the w half term which is coming here. And the half which comes in the denominator that gets flipped and becomes a two here. So that's the source of this two term here. So this is the integral in closed form which we get from this particular solution. So very often in mathematical modeling you do assume sometimes certain things and get closed form solutions because the closed form solution does give you a lot of insight into the physics of the problem. So now let's take a good look at this equation and let's think about how we could maximize range of the jet airplane. Now this is a very important problem because jets frequently travel between two airports. So if you are somebody who has been flying around lately, you know that if you are taking any long distance flight, for example, from London to New York or from Bombay to New York or Tokyo to Seattle, then you are going to travel in one of these jet airplanes. It's very unlikely you are going to travel in a propeller airplane. So if we look at this now, we'll see that to maximize R, what we can do is we can minimize CT, which is the specific fuel consumption corresponding to the jet. We can have maximum value of the weight. We can also fly at maximum CL half by CD. So that's the value coming from here. So essentially, that's something which you need to keep in mind. Now, if you look at this weight part, you can clearly see that W1 is W0 minus WF. So W0 is greater than W1. So this is going to be greater than W1. So essentially you want the fuel weight to be high so that W1 is relatively low. And so that's going to happen here if you have a high fuel weight. Of course, you cannot have too much fuel weight because the fuel tank itself is something which has to be designed keeping in mind the aircraft itself, the payload and so on, the structural characteristics, etc. 
So one more interesting thing you can see here is that density is there in the denominator here, which means that you want to fly this aircraft at low density. So low density is going to take place at high altitude. So you typically see the jet transports. If you fly them, they travel at a height of 31,000 to 38,000 feet above sea level or about 10,000 meters in this case. So this is a very high level if you are thinking in terms of kilometers. This is about 10 kilometers from the Earth's surface. And the reason you do that is that density is less here. Now, if you fly higher than that, some of these equations are not going to be valid. So keep that in mind. This is the density range where things are the best as far as cruise flight for subsonic commercial jets are concerned. So what happens? The airplane quickly tries to fly up to that level and then it hangs around there and near the airport where its destination is, it again starts coming down. So now we have got most of the equations for this class. We have derived expressions for the range of propeller, the endurance of propeller, the range of jet and the endurance of jet. And you can see these equations are quite different. Specifically where these aircraft are often used is that very high range situations, you would often prefer a jet. And in that case, you would have to look at these different factors. For example, you want to fly as high as possible for rho infinity to be as low as possible. You also want to fly at the value where CL half by CD is a maximum. And of course, you need to work a lot on CT. So you want to make CT as low as possible. So that has something to do with the engine systems and so on. So many a time, the range of the propeller or the range of the jet airplane is very important. For propellers also, things are very important because do remember that there are a plethora of aircraft out there which are propellers. And in fact, if you look at most of the small aircraft where most of the pilot training takes place, you are going to see that these are essentially propeller aircraft. So very often we think that the aircraft are all jet aircraft because when we are flying between two cities, we often fly in jets. But what happens is that if you go to any small airport, you look at the people who train to be pilots and also people who fly for hobbies, they often use propeller aircraft. And propeller aircraft are also very popular in developing countries where the fact that they can fly from airports which are relatively small and they have runways which are relatively small is very important. And very often the cost of the propeller aircrafts are also quite less. So many a time propeller aircraft are being widely used. And in fact, there are a very large number of small propeller aircraft which are flying around on any day around the world. So these aircraft are very important. There are a lot of small business and medium sized businesses which makes such propeller aircraft and it's very easy for any country or any company to make a small propeller aircraft compared to making one of the large jet aircraft because as far as large commercial jets are concerned, there are very few companies doing that. There is Boeing, there is Airbus and there are a few companies beside that. So that is more of a duopoly. It's very hard to break into that market. But to break into the market for smaller aircraft, smaller jets, smaller propeller aircraft is much more possible. So I'll end this video here. Do remember that these closed form equations are all about steady level flight. They do not include takeoff and landing. That's something we are going to study in the next few lectures. But before that, I'm going to make a lecture about the values at which you should fly this particular aircraft. So today we discovered various values such as max CL by CD, max CL 3 by 2 by CD, max CL half by CD. So all these conditions where we need to fly the aircraft to get the maximum performance out of the particular aircraft system, we are going to explore those through mathematics and through differentiation of the CL equation and see if those are maximum points or not. So I will end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. Do comment on my channel about the course and about what you are benefiting from the course and if you need any further insights into this particular course. See you soon.